Welcome to The Pivot. Toy Sweeney, a best-selling author, an award-winning fashion stylist, and the founder of the Well-Dressed Brand. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to The Pivot with Stephanie Humphrey, where we talk about how to make a transition, whatever that looks like in your life, through a job, heading back to school, leaving a relationship, just doing something different and what that journey might look like. I'm trying to help y'all through it. Uh, I've been through it myself. I did a TEDx that talked all about my transition from a career in engineering to a career in media. And now we talk about all of the things that go into that with some of my dear friends uh, and professionals that are helping me help you. And today on the Pivot, I would love to welcome in one of my oldest and dearest friends in the whole wide world, Toy Sweeney in the building. Toy Sweeney is a brand image expert, a best selling author, an award winning fashion stylist, and the founder of the Well Dressed Brand. Toy, thank you so much for being on the Pivot. Yay! Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm so excited to be here. You know, it's always a good time when I get to spend time with you. So let's go. <laughs> always a good time. So we're going to talk about image uh, because that's your jam. Um, does your look reflect your next step as you're pivoting, as you're thinking about the next part of your life and your journey? Are you ready? Uh, visually to make that happen. And I got to tell the story. I always have to tell this story. <laughs> so, um, you know, you see me right now, if, if you're watching this uh, on the on Roland streaming platform on the Black Star Network, you can see me clearly in a FAMU t-shirt. I'm repping my HBCU today. Uh, FAMU 1887 all day long, Rattler for life, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> um, and, you know, I like to think I know how to dress mm -hmm. and I like to think that, you know, I can put a little something, something together when necessary. Um, but there's a difference. There's just a difference when a professional helps you understand why things go together, why they're important, how to coordinate different pieces of, of your clothing to tell a story about your brand. So a few years ago, it's it's been a while now, well before pandemic, um, I had a big interview with a an agent at a larger um, agency in New York. I was I was ready to get to that next level. I was ready to, you know, take off and, and elevate and all that good stuff. And, and I was very nervous about the idea of this interview with this person. I really wanted to get with this. Agent. And it's so funny. I don't even remember the name of the agency at this point. <laughs> Crazy. I'm like, if I, if I saw the name of it, I would know it, but I can't even call, I wouldn't call them out anyway. Um, but it was, a, it was a very big agency in New York. And I was like, this is going to be the thing that I need to get me to that next level, to get the national television appearances and, and all those different things. And I asked Toy for her help. Of course, I was like, this is this is the biggest moment of my life so far. This is the thing, the pivot that's going to make it all happen. Um, I need you to help me put together a look that's going to dazzle these people and, and make them immediately fall in love with me. And we put together this, um, I hate to even call it an outfit because it was a look. Oh, honey, it was and, a look. Uh, and, it, and it's centered around this coat. And and this coat that we found it, I believe we found it at Nordstrom, and it was just chef's kiss, this coat, you know, because underneath it wasn't fancy. It was just a sort of an Angora cashmere kind of sweater, just gray and a, and a pair of black pants, straight black pants, um, cute little pair of snakeskin shoes. But this coat was just <laughs> so remarkable. And I can remember getting up there and I felt amazing. Um, and I get into this meeting with this woman at this agency and literally the entire time, she's just like, that coat is great. <laughs> wow. That coat is so great. Wow. That coat, that coat is really, where did you get that? And, and right away I knew I had her, you know, and, 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 right. and I didn't even have to do anything. You know, I don't, I don't even know how much we talked about like what I did or what I had done or what I even want to do with this agency. She was just so 
um, mesmer. She was literally mesmerized. And I say that without a trace yeah. of exaggeration. She was literally mesmerized by yeah. how chic um, and, mm-hmm. and, and well put together I looked that day that she just kept talking about the coat. It was, it was, a, like I said, I just, I kind of walked in and I just let the coat do the work. And, and it was then that I understood yeah. the importance of image and how it relates to your brand and, and, and that whole thing. Talk to us about why image is important. Oh my gosh. Well, I love that story so much because it, it lends itself so, to a hundred percent of everything that I talk about, everything that's in my book, like everything that is that encompasses the well dressed brand, right? Which mm-hmm. is w- number one: what do you want to say? You know, and does where you're going align with what how you're showing up? And what I love about that story the most is that we always start with, right, Stephanie? Again, what do you want to say? Well, of yeah. course, you want to be memorable, right? And so. <laughs> She's going to be, you're going to be memorable because of that coat. All she could think about was that coat is great, which translates into Stephanie's great, Mm -hmm. which translated into that coat was exceptional, which also was Stephanie's exceptional. (laughs) And that was it. So, you know, when you're in this cast of, of people, you know, so to speak, this lineup or whatever it was that she needed to do to make a decision about bringing you on into the agency, I, I was so excited about how you were going to stand out and how you did stand out. And so I love that story. We have probably about three of those stories from just working together um, over the years, but that one definitely is one of my favorite. And so image is obviously, um, as you've demonstrated from the story, important because it gives you the power to control the narrative. She didn't get to, to make any assumptions. You walked in, you shut it down and you were ready to go. And the other thing too, <laughs> is that it. I love the image so much. And the reason that it's so powerful is that it impacts your career. As we talked about, it in, in, impacts your business. It impacts your relationships. It really is such um, an exceptional nonverbal way to stand in your power and control the outcome. Like who gets to do that? It lends itself to the greatest story that's ever been written. That is you. You know, and I think that most people, when you talk about image, they want to talk about confidence and all of these things. I don't share the world's opinion on confidence at all, you know, because I feel like confidence is like a byproduct of you having a personal brand and a brand image that is so exceptional that people don't have a choice but to follow your lead. That's it, period. So, wow. I just, I love that story. The other thing too is that, Um, Image is so important because it really is about the meaning that you give the different items in your closet when we when we talk about wardrobe, which I'm sure we're going to talk about later. But it really is all encompassing. It, It really is all encompassing. So when you're talking about your image, you're talking about your vision, it, you know, you, your, what you stand for, what you don't stand for, where you're going, all of these things, it all comes back to your appearance. Um, and so I was thinking as you were talking about, I'm reading the book of 48 Laws of Power today, and I was really surprised in a book such as this that he spent a whole chapter talking about appearance, which is the same as image. And how powerful it is and how strategic it can be. And again, going back into it's the most powerful nonverbal thing that you can do because we've all done it. The moment you meet someone, the moment you hear their name, what's the first thing we all do? We head right on over to Google. We hit Google image. We hit Google video. We hit all the things to learn all, all of that. And what happens is that something happens. You have about eight seconds um, and then that time, someone's deciding if you are, you know, are you really an expert? You know, are you, are whatever, are you beautiful? Um, do they find you attractive? Do they think that you're not attractive? Are you telling the truth? Are you not telling the truth? And it doesn't matter. It's their opinion and that becomes the reality. And so there's so many a thousand things that I can go on about, but those are kind of the top of mind things that really hone into why your image is so important. And so if you are someone who wants to control the narrative, then you have to control your image.
The 54th NAACP Image Awards is airing live on February 25th, honoring outstanding performances in film, television, theater, music, and literature. But this year, Roland Martin Unfiltered is nominated for Outstanding News or Information Series or Special. To vote, head to NAACPImageAwards.net, scroll down to Outstanding News slash Information Series, select the category. You have to click on hashtag Roland Martin Unfiltered Black Votes Matter Election Night Coverage. To submit your vote, you will need an email. Only one vote allowed per email. Voting ends on February 10th at 9 p.m. Vote today. People tend to trivialize um, clothing and, and trivialize the idea of fashion and, and yes. think that it's this frivolous thing that only people who are image obsessed care about and only people who are shallow care about. Oh, I don't care about what I wear because it doesn't make a difference. People should just want to know me for me and, and all that. And, and, you know, in a, in a perfect world, that would be great. Um, however, we live in this world, on this planet, in this country, in this society, where that type of thing actually does count and Absolutely. does make a difference. And, and I think, you know, especially for somebody in the middle of making some sort of transition, yeah. it's going to make a huge difference because you're going to be out there. You're going to be putting yourself out there in a different kind of way. You're going to need to build up a new audience potentially or new clients yeah. or new customers or or whatever the case might be in your transition. It, you're doing something different. So your image is going to have to reflect that um, if it doesn't already. I mean, maybe you just fly already and, and you all put together. Most of us aren't though, because most of us really haven't put enough thought into what we want to say about ourselves yeah. uh, through through how we look to even start that process. So right. how do we assess um, what our current image says about us? Because maybe we do. We, we, we know we're about to make this big change and we need to take a look at what we got going on now to see what we need to do. How do we start doing that assessment? Well, I think that the first thing that I would say is probably not what most people would say. Most people would probably tell you to ask your friends and your family, don't do that <laughs> because they, they love you. They're not going to lie to you. I mean, you know, you have to sometimes brutally, you have to consider the source. Right. And so you, you can't ask, you can't ask them because they love you. And they're going to be like, you look, you look so great. Right. You know, right. you walk down the street and you're just like, well, I was getting a lot of compliments. And so because people respond to things that are different. You know, and different is better than being better. So that's one thing is so look at what you're doing. Are you doing what everybody else is doing? But first, before you do any of that, what I want you to do is sit down and look at your goals. Look at what you need to accomplish that day. If you're jumping on, you know, Zoom for meetings or calls mm -hmm. or meeting clients or whatever, social media posts, going on live, whatever. Whatever your schedule is for that day, look at that and then go think about what do you want to say? Look at your goals for the month. Look at what you're planning to accomplish that year. I think we have, what, like six more months before the year is over? You know, have you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so when you think about what do you want to say, most people say, I want to be approachable. I want to be fashionable. I want to be whatever. Does what, you, what, what you've been wearing, does that reflect where you're going, does it reflect what you want to say, right? And so the way that you do that is you have to look at the colors that you're wearing. I talk about that um, in my book, Secrets of a Well-Dressed Brand. I go all into the color. So let me give you a quick example. So let's say tomorrow, you know, we're going back to Stephanie's example. You're meeting with this big agency and you say, well, I, you know, I'm going to sell them my, this product. You know, let's pretend that it's something like that. I really want to get them, you know, to, to co-sign on this product line I'm trying to launch. Okay, so if it's something like that, then perhaps you want to wear blue because blue is the color of trust, you know, and so what you want to do is you want to be able to go in and you want to be able to build trust. If you're saying, no, this is product is so different and I'm so different that I want them to think that I'm creative and innovative, then you want to wear yellow or you want to wear orange or something like that. Um, if you're going and let's say you're doing something for a children's hospital. And you're just like, okay, I love the color red. You know, I love the color red, you know, but red is all about being ambitious and it's about determination. And so when you're trying to raise money for something that you deeply care about, that may not be the right color for you to wear that day. 
And so you want to think about things like that. Think about UPS, you know, how their color is brown. Think about how iPhone is used or iPhone, Apple is using white, right? And that's sea of black headphones, you know? So you want to consider all of these things. You have to be so intentional. It really is not about an outfit. It really is not. It's about you being intentional about your goals, about what it is that you want to say, about your mission, your vision, everything has to come into alignment. So I know it sounds like a lot to think about, but it could be done in a split second by just going, okay, what do I typically wear? Does that make sense for, you know, does that make sense for what I, what I'm trying to accomplish? Okay, now we might need to make a change if the answer is no. Right. Right. It's a lot to think about. It is. And, and we don't want anybody to get overwhelmed. But the idea that you're just going to go into a store and, and ask the the salesperson on the floor like, hey, you know, make me look good is, is just not realistic um, and, and is not a good strategy for when you are trying to level up your image uh, for that next part of your journey. Um, you talk about this in your book um, and on your website as a part of the well-dressed brand using your wardrobe as a business strategy. What does that mean? So again, it's going back to you being really, really intentional. You know, I always say that you can always tell when somebody's my client because they walk in a room and they just show up and shut it all the way down. And so (laughs) like all the way, period. You know, because that's what you have to do. But I'm also working with mostly C-suite executives. You know, they they can't afford to make a mistake, you know. And so right. everything in your closet is brand right. And so that's what that means. And so that means that you are really intentional. You have a section of your closet for every part of your life. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to have this huge you know, walk-in closet. I just moved to New York. I have zero closet space. Mm. So, you know, but you have a section that is for your workout things because maybe fitness is a part of your lifestyle. You have a section that you wear when you jump on Zoom calls, maybe with clients or potential whatever. You have a section that you wear when you do your podcast. You have a section that you wear when you're invited. You just have different things. Right. Whether it's parent-teacher conference, whether it's dropping the kids off, every aspect of your life is super intentional. Um, and it doesn't mean, again, it's not about being fancy. It's not about little outfits. It's, it's about you using the color of psychology, y- utilizing items um, that makes sense for your wardrobe. It doesn't make sense for me to, I love a strappy sandal. It does not make sense. And I'm only five, three. It does not make sense for me to, you know, wear six inch strappy sandals for every part of my life. Like it doesn't make sense. And so I'm not one that you would typically find in sneakers, but yes, I have, you know, I have a pair or two. (laughs) So love my heels, you know, for when I do need to run errands or when I do need to go out and, 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 you know, run or walk or whatever I'm doing that day. And so it's about really making sure that your closet is brand right, being intentional. Again, looking at what it is that we're trying to accomplish, because every decision that you make is either getting you closer to your goal or it's bringing you further away. Right. We're running towards greatness. So we don't have time to be making, making mistakes at all. Right. You want to make it so that you don't have to think about it. And you know that this is the stuff that I wear when it's time to do this. This is the stuff that I wear when it's time to do this. Um, Kind of not quite capsule, but but just segmented and compartmentalized so that you don't have to think about it. But you know that you're going to show up um, as your best self every single time. Well, it is a capsule. It it is a capsule, but the, the, what makes it different from the capsule is that you're being you're being intentional in a different way. Whereas mm-hmm. with the capsule wardrobe, you're ta- you're you're really you're really going okay. Here is seventy two or a hundred items that I'm going to have in my closet, and and you're kind of doing the same things, but I'm being more strategic about colors instead of you having. 20 colors or just all colors, I always suggest that my clients narrow it down to six because most of us can wear about 30. So narrow it down to six. You know, you have like three neutrals and three colors Mm -hmm. um, that you're going to wear. So you do your white, black, you know, whatever. You do your navy, your brown, ivory, you know, those are your neutrals, your white and black. And then you pop in, you know, three more colors that you love. So you do that. And so with a capsule wardrobe, you go, okay, well, I bought 
I have three sweaters. And so, you know, again, it's not as intentional. You're going to have three sweaters. I'm going to buy this one. So I have to get rid of one because I'm only allowed to have three. This is not so much about the numbers, even though I do encourage you to scale it back because what's going to happen is that it's go you're going to, um, you'll experience a lot of decision fatigue if you have too many options, especially if you're a female. Yes. We have too many items and too many things. So by doing a brand right or a capsule closet, you know, it really helps to cut down. The, the bigger thing, Stephanie, is something that we all love. I wish I had like a little cha-ching is that by having a brand right closet, you're going to spend less money so that you're not just going out buying random things you know, and having to try them on because, you know, you just don't, you don't know what your style is. And so right. you're out there spending all this money. You look it in your closet. There's a thousand items in there. You don't know, you know, you don't have anything to wear. So then now you're going back at like, it's this hamster wheel. We're trying to cease all of that. It's done. Having a brand right closet that reflects, reflects your personal brand will cut down on all of those things. And so then you're being intentional. Then you have this strategy. Strategy without a vision is going to make you go all the way backwards. It's sending you all the way back to ground zero. And we are completely about moving forward. No one has time for that. Folks, don't forget, you can vote for us for the NAACP Image Award. That's right. Here's what you do. You go to vote.naacpimageawards.net. Scroll down to the category Outstanding News Information Series or Special. Select that category. Then what you do is scroll to Roland Martin Unfiltered Black Votes Matter Election Night Coverage. Click on Vote. You can then scroll back to the other categories uh, as well. You can register your vote with the email of your choice. You can actually use more than one email if you want. Only one vote is allowed per email address then confirm that you're not a robot voting ends february 10th at 9 p.m eastern let's go ahead and bring this home we're the only black owned media company that actually got nominated for an image award when do we actually know that we may need to upgrade or like because I think some people do get stuck maybe in those time frames or eras when they felt their best or they felt they looked their best yeah. and I mean I'm just glad I'm just keeping it all the way real we all know that one person right. that still dresses like it is 1987 um, because maybe yeah. that was the time when when they was popping or or still right. dresses like it's 1992 and and is not necessarily self-aware enough to see that it is time for an update. Um, yes. What could somebody like that do? Or what could you tell someone like that? If you, if you chose to be that friend that, that corrects in love, um, right. you know, how would somebody <laughs> recognize that it was time to, to make that update? Well, most people, you know, outside, you know, to your point, they will, they live in a certain decade. Right. Mm -hmm. But so there's that. And you can't tell someone who's doing that that they're doing that because they're going to say, well, everything comes back around. Right. So then part two is that they may be trendy, 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 trendy. They, they're walking around. We all have that friend and they're wearing way too many trends. They got the flare jeans with the clear shoes, with the fringe, with the, like it's it, with the crop top, you know, right. it's all of it. Right. And so what you want to do is make sure that you strive for relevance, not trends. Trends go in and out, but you want to be relevant. And so that is what you want to strive for. And so where most of us make mistakes, to be honest, is, um, you know, if they're not making the mistakes with their shoes because they're such a push to be comfortable and women just don't really, some of us haven't figured out how to quite do that yet. So it's things like that. Eyebrows is another thing is that, you know, we're still wearing like the 90s super skin, like, no, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that you're relevant. That's one of the things that I look at my clients. I look at your hair. I look at your makeup. I say, you know what? Your hair looks great, but it to make it more relevant. You and know, I want to I want to I want to just stop you and emphasize yeah. that because we've been talking a lot about wardrobe as yeah. a business strategy, but it's the entire package. It, it, is, it is 
haircut. It is the eyebrow. It is the, the, the glasses frame. It is the nails. It is it is all of those different things that that may be due for for a refresh, if you will. I mean, I don't I don't I don't want anybody to feel like they have to literally toss out their entire closet. But no. but I do want people to seriously consider if it's time for a refresh. And if and is there is there any particular and it, there may not be. And if the answer is no, it, it's no. But is there any particular sort of time frame that people should be looking to do something yeah. like this, like every 10 years or every five years or yeah. every how often should people be looking to kind of reassess um, yeah. whether or not a refresh is necessary? That's a good question. So three to five years, you want every three to five years, you want to be looking at your hair, your makeup, your glasses. You know, have you, you know, because that's about the time, even if you, wear, if you buy the hottest boots of the season right now, mm -hmm. you know, you're probably going to be a little bit sick of them by the time, you know, if you're somebody who's a little bit more trend, right, you'll be sick of them um, probably in three years for sure. But you also may just last next year be like, I wore those so much last year, you know, that I can't stand to look at them again. But most of us is going to be about three to five years. You should be going, when was the last time I got new headshots? When was the last time I got new glasses? You know, if you're someone that wears your glasses all the time, then you going to your local, you know, eye doctor to get more expensive glasses may not be the thing for you unless you're going to like that's going to become your signature. You know, and that's a whole nother conversation about creating your right. signature style. But that's why everyone's going on to like Zlul, And there's a whole bunch of black owned um, eyeglass businesses, too, that people are just really taking hold of because you can get five pair, you know, at the same price that you would normally get you know, one pair, right. um, you know, so things like that, w you know, three to five years, again, headshots, um, you know, glasses, n makes nails, nail shape. That's another one that people really tend to forget. Mm. I love a square, you know, but everybody's doing oval or stiletto right now. That might be a little bit more relevant. So you, you don't have to, essentially, if you're a professional, you may not show up with the seven inch you know, coffin shaped nails. Right. I don't know how people even, you know, wipe their butts with those things, but <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know, but you may just go, Oh, you know what? Instead of me doing square, you know, maybe I'll try round or something in between. That's going to be a little bit more relevant, you know, right. Right. All right. of those kind of things, your hair, you know, maybe you put a gloss on again, you, like you said, you're not throwing out your whole closet. It's really about those small tweaks um, to just make you relevant. What I would recommend, which is like the magic pill is like, well, if you spend a good amount on your clothing, like you're happy with, you know, you have the right blazers the right this and that, then I would just suggest every season updating your accessories. Oh, okay. You know, that's because that's e easy enough. Yeah. Because, you know, you just a new handbag, a new, and then shop it, shop backwards. Right. So instead of doing what we've all were taught to do growing up, put together the outfit is start with a great, pair of shoes or boots or whatever your kicks, whatever it is that you love, start with that and then work up as opposed to the other way around. Because oftentimes a shoe is the most difficult part to find. Yep. So start with that and then reverse engineer it and then end up at the top. So that everything kind of makes sense. I tend to do that, I, especially if I'm traveling. I'm like, I need the shoe that's going to go with the most things and is right. going to work in the most situations. And, you know, and even mm -hmm. when I'm just looking to get dressed during the day, I'm like, what shoe am I going to wear? Because that's going to determine right. what everything else that goes on and, and the look. So, yeah, that, that's a, a really good tip. <music>
we know, well, first of all, what does a professional offer um, that that's different than than what I could go do myself or or just ask the salesperson on the on the retail floor to do for me? Um, and and what should we be looking for in that professional? Well, I think so. There's a couple things. So when you when you're going into uh, just a random retail store you know, they are the true definition of a stylist, which is just that somebody who puts outfits together. And so if you are somebody who just needs somebody to put an outfit together, then that may be the person for you. When you get to a fashion stylist, that's a person that's going to make you a little bit more relevant, probably a little bit more trendy. Um, You want to be mindful that unless it's somebody where you absolutely love their style, because most fashion stylists tend to put you in something that they like as opposed to what's the right thing for you. Um, And so, and then you have an image consultant. So the fashion stylist is a person that knows um, how, but they may not always know why they're putting those things to you. An image consultant is somebody who knows the, they know the rules, they know why, but they may not, they may be a little funky on that. How I can always tell when somebody is using an image consultant because when I look at that image consultant's clients, all I see are rules. It's like the chunky necklace, the so and so earring, this, <laughs> the, you know, the shirt off the shoulder with this, the jeans with the roll at the end. Like it's a formula, right? Um, and then in a stylist, it's just like it's trend, 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 look editorial. And so, and you that may not lend itself to you, especially if you are a professional or an expert in your field. And so, what I do, um, is I'm both, I'm an image consultant in a fashion styles, but I'm looking at everything from a branding perspective. And so all I care about is what you are trying to execute. It's about execution, execution, execution. And what do you want to say? It's about shutting out all of the noise. And so, you know, a perfect example is I was working with, um, I used to work at QVC as a style director mm-hmm. and I used to, you know, this, <laughs> um, and I had the opportunity to, um, help all 30 program hosts. And I was working with one in particular one day and, um, she, you know, is exceptional. She had, you know, she's a great sense of style. And so I was in the store before she arrived. So we were going to try some things on and, um, she, and I saw this jacket. And I said, oh, she would love that, but I didn't choose the jacket. And so as she walked into the fitting room where I already had everything laid out for her, she grabbed the jacket. And she said, why didn't you choose this jacket? I love this jacket. And I said, I didn't choose that jacket because although you love that jacket, what I've learned um, you know, about your brand image is that you are of a certain age and it not really is about age, but it kind of is this. It really is more about the style. Right. So even though I'm using the word age, just hear me out. It's about the style. There are certain styles that you really only can wear if you're 20 or if you're 70. And if you are in between that, you will look very dated or inappropriate. Right. And so she, I said, okay, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So I let her put the jacket on. And then I said, okay, I said, now put this jacket on the one I chose for you. And I said, do you see how you look so much younger in this jacket? Because it's relevant. That one is so classic that it's dating you. And if you were 20, you'd look like money, you know, but because you're over 40, it, it's too, you, we need to find something that's more relevant. So I found the same thing in a different texture. So we're going to go leather as opposed to tweed, you know, like whatever. Right, right. And so it's knowing those things. And so that's kind of the stages and the difference between a fashion stylist and image consultant and then somebody like me, who is a brand image strategist, who's looking through e- the eye of everything of where you're going and what you're trying to accomplish, how you can show up and shut it down and taking no prisoners. Fantastic. <laughs> Final question. Where can someone start if if they were like, OK, I listen to toy. I got to get myself together. My budget's not huge, um, but maybe I can invest in three things right now, um, be it clothing, accessory, hair, like whatever those three things are, I can do, I can only do three to start that process of updating my look for this next period in my life. What three things would you, I know it's like such a loaded question because it could be like any three things. What three things would you suggest? It can't be, it has to be, it has to be your accessories because, and the reason that I say that is because 
real talk, you can go to Target right now and get a pair of jeans and no one would really know if they're not $300, $800 jeans, right? You know, if you're someone who's savvy, you can go to Goodwill right now and get a get a really good fabric, you know, wool, whatever, cashmere blazer that they don't even make anymore, get it tailored, you know, and it can look like a thousand dollar, you know, out two thousand, three thousand dollar Alexander McQueen, like whatever. It can look like money, but you can't fake really unless it's a super good knockoff. You can't really fake your accessories. And so what I'm saying is just that you can throw on a monochromatic black ivory navy, whatever outfit, Mm -hmm. yellow, orange, whatever you want. But if your accessories, if you're carrying that exceptional bag, if you're wearing exceptional shoes, if your glasses are on point, your net, like all those things, if your accessories are relevant and where they're supposed to be, then that tells the story so quickly at such an affordable price. So I would say, make sure that your accessories are what you're investing in. If you can't, if if you're like, I can't get another thing right now, then dress in monochromatic, pop your accessories on and then call it a day. That's it. Make sure that your hair is relevant and your nails are relevant. Done and done. Easy enough. Start with the accessories. You don't have to do a lot, but you really do have to put some time and some thought into where you see yourself going with this new transition in your life is super exciting as well. And, it, it, and use it um, as the exciting change that it is. Feed off of that energy and and get excited about the idea that um, change can be good. Because I think, too, some people... Yeah are holding on to we talk about you know we talked about the fact that they're stuck in these eras in these different decades but i think sometimes that change can be scary for a lot of people as well so you know we want people to embrace that idea you're making this huge pivot anyway so sort of embrace everything that goes along with it and 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 just lean in to the idea that Small changes make a big difference. Start with those accessories. Tailoring is a must. And it is head to toe. It's not just your clothing. Um, You want to look at your overall image from head to toe uh, to see where things could get a little bit better. Toy Sweeney, thank you so much. This was awesome. You can follow Toy all around the web at Toy Sweeney. Please check out her website at ToySweeney.com. I believe you are taking new clients, right? Always. (laughs) Always. <laughs> Always. Always. Listen, I'm telling y'all, you need a Toy Sweeney in your life. She has helped me for years to prepare for my most important events. Um, I don't trust anybody else uh, with that, you know, honor that 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 I that I consider it to be um, because I know how I want to look. I know how I want to feel. I know what sort of impression I want to make. And I know that toy can help me do that. So it it really is an investment in you. And especially if you're looking to make a change and head to that next level, a professional is really going to help you get there a lot more quickly, I think, than you just trying to head to a store and figure it out on your own. So hit Toy Sweeney up at toysweeney.com, enlist her services. You, You will not regret it toy my friend i love you thank you so much (laughs) thank you thank you for having me and thank you all for watching the pivot with stephanie humphrey stay tuned for the next episode soon and thanks for watching 